Uh, so, uh, good afternoon. My name is Bobby Nair. I'm a program manager at Spread the Word. Uh, Spread the Word is London's writer development agency. And um, our job is to help you make your mark on the page, the screen, and in the world. And you can find this online at the address up there, um, over there, and or, or visit us at the Albany. Uh, so today I went with the mildly provocative title uh, for this talk of Why Aren't You Writing? Uh, because a few months ago when the South Bank asked me to give a, a talk, I was sitting there thinking, Bobby Nair, why aren't you writing? And um, like many of the people who work in the arts, uh, I am a lapsed writer. And by lapsed, I mean literally and spiritually, because writing is as much about the soul as it is the heart and mind. And in that vein, the last time I wrote was about June, July 2018, uh, when I redrafted a short story that was published in a book. Uh, since then, it's been slim pickings. So today, I thought I'd let you in on a plan to go from, why aren't you writing, to, wow, well, you're writing. And uh, mic change as well. Um, so, before I get to that, before I get to that, I, uh, I want to get to know you a bit better. Uh, so, a show of hands, please. Who here is a... Having trouble writing. You took your time. You're having trouble putting your hands up as well. Uh, who here is writing well enough but not finishing anything? Yeah, there's some overlap. There's some overlap. Uh, who's um, have some something written uh, but no idea if it's good or not? There's uh, more people. Um, who's sending books out? Their book out to agents. I know you've got uh, one, two, ones at two. Who's published a book? Uh, over there and over there. And who's in the wrong place? <laughs> okay. So uh, this is also my audition for my Netflix comedy special. Um, but let's get on with it. So I'd like to think that most people would be in the top, top three of that list. And uh, my main thought for us today is really to think about uh, the why of why aren't you writing? Uh, because, you know, if we get to the bottom of why we do, why we want to do something, I think that's the first step to making it happen. So to that end, we're going to do a short exercise. And here I'm trying to pioneer one minute writing. Uh, so take out your phone or a piece of paper and a pen. And bear in mind, this is a sharing exercise and you'll be sharing with someone sitting next to you. Uh, I'm going to set a timer and I want you to spend one minute writing three reasons why you write. So three reasons why you're here today, why you're writing, uh, what, what's what. And as I said, we've got one minute, and it helps me kill my runtime. I'm glad one person laughed. Uh, so one minute, three reasons why you write. Thirty seconds. Some real head scratching going on. Like it. Deep thought. Five seconds. No pressure. Well, technically, we've got some writing done. Um, now I want to show you, uh, could you show the person sitting next to you, left or right, uh, your, three, your three reasons? Hopefully we'll make some new friends today. You'll be here for the duration. 
And uh, I'll share my three reasons. Really liking the chatter. Okay, 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 that's, that's enough talking, that's enough talking. Okay, so my three reasons. Uh, trying to find a way to express myself, makes me happy. I think I'm good at it when I get round to it. Who, who had any of those reasons? Writing, does it make you happy? Who, 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 who likes to be miserable when they're writing? <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a few of those. So we've covered why you write. I think it's important to think about that, especially if you've not been writing or you don't have a regular practice. So now I'm going to share uh, a few a bits of a bit of theory, uh, which I made made up. Uh, so you may have heard of the four P's of marketing. Any prizes? Prizes for anyone who can say what they are? No marketeers in the room. Uh, it's prize product promotion place. But have you heard about the four P's of writing? Uh, well, you shouldn't have because I made it up. Um, but I really think that if we think about it in a, in a certain structure, it might, might help. So I'm going to go through my four P's of writing. So here's my first one. If it works. People. Uh, so writing, as we all know, is a solitary act. Uh, but the process of developing as a writer and hopefully a published author is far from solitary. Obviously, we've got lots of arts organizations here who are here to help you develop your careers as writers. Um, and at some point, unfortunately, you will have to interact with people as a writer. I know we all like sitting on our own, not talking to people. Uh, but you're already ahead of the curve. You're here today. And I hope you stay on and you get to meet agents and talk to us. And I just wanted to show you a picture of the main project that I managed at Spread the Word, uh, which is the London Writers Awards. And uh, it's a nine-month development program. I'll, I'll talk about it a bit more in this presentation. But we take on 30 writers per year from underrepresented backgrounds in publishing. And this is this year's cohort. And uh, one of the main reasons why writers apply for the program is because they want to be part of a community, one that gives them an opportunity to share their work, but also a structure and a level of accountability to get stuff done. And you never thought about, oh, being a writer is about accountability. But I think uh, if you're not getting stuff done, sometimes you need a process. Um, but you don't have to commit to a nine-month program. Uh, you could do a workshop, a course, join a local writing group or feedback group or a meetup, and uh, of course, make the most of today. And my second P, as I just mentioned, is process. Um, and there's lots of ways to approach process. To my, today, I mean in terms of how you plan to get your story written. And uh, just for the sake of, uh, there's lots of ways to think about this, but I'm going to borrow from Kurt Vonnegut and his book, Timequake, and ask, are you a swooper or a basher? And to explain, swoopers write a story quickly, higgledy-piggledy, crinkum crankum any which way. They then go over it painstakingly, fixing everything, and that is just plain awful or doesn't work. Bashers go one sentence at a time, getting it exactly right before they go on to the next one. When they're done, they're done. So show of hands, who's a swooper? And who's a basher? And are the swoopers going to swoop on the bashers later? Because it seems about 50-50, so it'd be an even fight. But in the end, it doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is how you get the words down, rearrange them, rearrange them again. Um, and what we're essentially trying to capture is something that's ephemeral. And that needs a degree of organization to get it done. Some writers talk about Excel spreadsheets. You'd never think that would happen. Gantt charts. Others use Scrivener. So my third P is place. And time is the main reason why people struggle to write, but that doesn't begin with P. So I'm going with the second main reason, which is place. And uh, we all need a place to write whether it's on the commute to work, on your phone, in a coffee shop, library, or if you're lucky, a room in your home. If you're not so lucky, 
or need a change of scenery, then we have a solution for you at Spread the Word, depending if you write on Thursdays between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. And uh, this is our meeting room at Spread the Word, which we're letting six people use for free on Thursdays. You have to email us in. The, the details are up on the screen. Um, and pictured here was the scene last Thursday, very quiet, where Mike was getting on with his novel. So the final P is persistence. And being a writer, being a published author is work. It's a job. It takes a lot of graft, persistence, and a thick skin. But you're in the same boat here as everyone else. And um, here's one of my favorite photos from a recent workshop for the London Writers' Awards. I like it because if you look very closely, you can see sheer graft and determination on the writers' faces. You can tell they're getting things done. And with these four Ps and this program, it goes to show you that if you find the right people, a solid process, a viable space, and just stick with it, you'll be well on your way. So that's been my thoughts on getting back into writing, but now I'm going to give you my spiel about Spread the Word um, and what we do and how we can help. So I've mentioned the London Writers' Awards a few times, partly because it's the main project I manage. In short, we've tried to create a free alternative to a creative writing MA where we take on 30 writers from four underrepresented background categories in published books in the UK today. And those categories are disabled writers, BME writers, LGBTQ writers, and working class writers. And we program them an intensive program of workshops, feedback groups, industry engagement, and one-on-one -on -one support. And this photo is from last year's cohort, who finished in May this year. Uh, six of them have got agents. One of them has got a two-book deal uh, with much more to come. And applications for the London Writers' Awards will open again in May 2020. Okay, our next project is the London Short Story Prize. And we've been running the prize since 2013. Previous winners include Claire Fisher, Ruby Cowling, and Guy Ware. The prize is currently in the judging phase with Eli Williams, Rowan Hissel Buchanan, and the agent Charlotte Seymour. The winner receives a thousand pounds and we produce a book with the 12 long listed entries. Our next prize is the Life Writing Prize, which is our only national competition, and that's in association with the Goldsmiths Writer Center. And pictured here is last year's winner, 2018's winner, Danny Brunton, and shortlisted writer Fumi Adewale. And that prize opens this November. It's free to enter. Uh, it's life writing. You'll need about 5,000 words, either from a book that you've been writing or a standalone piece. And the winner will receive 1,500 pounds, an Arvon course, and other development opportunities. And then, almost there, we manage uh, the Young People's Laureate for London, uh, which was formerly known as the Young Poet Laureate. This year's laureate, laureate is Teresa Lola, and her mission is to raise the visibility of poetry, engage and inspire London's young people with poetry through the uh, issues that affect them, and in Teresa's case, it's mental health awareness, and also to support the development of London's talented poets. As an organization, we do a lot more, and I'm just going to show a screen about our membership screen, but I, I really want you to come and have a chat with us, uh, or chat with me, because it's just me. Uh, but our membership team is called the London Writers Network, and here's what you get for £25 a year. Uh, I'm not going to read it all out. So, I'm going to wrap, you, wrap up uh, with a few words, uh, a line from a poem by Charles Bukowski's poem, So You Want to Be a Writer. Who's heard of that poem? Has anyone heard of it? Three people? It's uh, four people? It's, um, I discovered it in my mid-20s uh, when I was writing pretty regularly, and it stuck with me ever since. And it, if you haven't read the poem, look it up. I, I recommend a bit of caution because like a lot of Bukowski, he tends to tell it as it is. It's not always pretty. Uh, but I like this line. If you have to wait for it to roar out of you, then wait patiently. 
So uh, I'd like to thank the London Literature Festival and Creative Future for having us here. If you'd like to find out more about Spread the Word, come and have a chat. And uh, I'll be here until uh, about five o'clock. Thanks very much.